in Art Nouveau design, some really beautiful, unique and special that I personally love. I love architectures behind it. At the end, we'll get to see the Cathedral of the Christ the Savior, the biggest in Moscow, the main in Russia, the tallest Orthodox cathedral in the world. That's the cathedral that you can see on the cover of this tour. And at the end, we'll go to a beautiful Patriarchy Bridge where you'll get to see stunning views over Moscow. I hope you're ready to start the tour. Uh, thank you, Mark, and everyone for your answers. Let's start with one of the most interesting and special buildings. I'm standing right next to it, so I'll have to turn slowly. And it's known as Kyakushev or Kyakusheva Mansion. It's over there. It reminds of the castle and many Russians compare it to a castle. I'm going to cross the street uh, in a few minutes, so you'll get to see from the other side this beautiful building. But what makes it special? Of course, design and architecture. It represents Art Nouveau design, Art Nouveau style, that is known in Russia as modern. In fact, this was a style that allowed architects to express themselves to create this beautiful and unique architecture. And the czar of this design, of this style in Russia, was certainly Lev Kyakushev. So it's known as the main building of Kyakushev mansion of Astoshenko. We'll get to see another one uh, in a few minutes. So there are several Kekushev buildings in this area, but this is the most special one. This is the most interesting one and this building he created for himself. Originally it was for one of the richest men in the world, Sava Mamontov, but Sava Mamontov got bankrupted. So Kekushev used this opportunity to create this beautiful building if uh, I can say the castle mansion for himself. An interesting element about the building that we can see this hub. It probably it's the only building where you can find it in Moscow because actually it's forbidden. But you know, it was the beginning of the 20th century, uh, just several years before the revolution. So um, I'm going to cross the street. We have a delivery man who wants to ask me something, but uh, let me just cross the street and we'll get to see another beautiful uh, building, a uh, lesion on the other side. But I want to show you what's on the top. Diane, it's a very good question. That's why I have to cross the street. But, you know, I don't want to die. I don't want it to have to be the, the end of the tour. Therefore, I'll have to wait for uh, approximately 30 seconds. Meanwhile, we can just take a brief look at another Kekushev mansion. This one also belonged to Kekushev and actually uh, to his wife, Anna Ivanovna. It might be really confusing uh, for Russian speakers to look for this building because it's not actually known as Kekushev, it's known also as Kekusheva. So often female surnames or last names in Russian and the, with A, so that's the difference. Therefore, sometimes it's Kekushev, sometimes it's Kekusheva, and nevertheless, it's the same building. Uh, and the next one is also named after his wife. So at the top, we have a lion, and it's more than just a lion. The lion became the symbol of Kekushev. It became the symbol of his design. It became the symbol of his architecture. And on the other building that we will see today, we will also get to see his lines. It became like the signature of the master. Why? Well, two reasons. First, Lev. This is the name of the architect. Lev means lion in Russian. So that's why he had lions. And another reason that Kekushev himself mentioned, Lev is meant to protect the mansion. So therefore he always had this beautiful lions to protect this uh, mansion. So I'm going to turn my gimbal, therefore you'll get a chance to have a good postcard. My gimbal, sometimes it's not ready for a tour. Maybe I'll have to restart it, but let's do it. So. 
Again, looks like a medieval castle. And what is special about this design, about this architecture, is that every mansion, every building is absolutely unique. That's why I love this story and that's why I love this street, Astojinka Street. So I hope it was enough time. Uh, at the top, let me also zoom in for you. You can see the years it was built. Uh, the beginning of the 20th century and it was opened in 1903. What was in there? Uh, they were different types of diplomatic or, uh, uh, departments. Uh, there was a, an Egyptian in, and, uh, embassy just a few years ago. Today, officially, there are several offices and companies. Unfortunately, it's not possible to get inside, officially only for the days of the cultural heritage. But, well, maybe one day we will be lucky to go inside. This is one of the difficulties in Moscow, that most of these embassies, most of these uh, beautiful buildings, they belong to the city and it's hardly uh, you can get inside. But I have a beautiful photo to share with you. So this is the stairs, beautiful stairs, decorative stairs became one of the biggest symbols of Art Nouveau design of Art Nouveau style. And I'm also going to share a photo of Lev Kekushev himself. So let's take a look at another beautiful building that we have on the other side. Uh, it's known as Lysian Mansion. I believe you've already noticed that most of the mansions are known after the owners, not actually after the architects. It just happened that Kekushev was more than just an architect and he was also the order but usually it would be named after a rich man who ordered it so the story behind this mansion that i'm showing you uh, originally it was built in the 19th century so it's uh, a typical classical design that's what it was originally Cla cl typical classical design two-story building but the owner lesion became friends with lev kekushev he liked his mansion on the other side and then he asked him, hmm, why don't you decorate my mansion? And Lekosha was, yes, you know, it would be nice to have another beautiful building, uh, another beautiful view. So yes, he decided to decorate. And just an interesting fact that if we'll take a look at the sign next to the building, we will not see the name of the original architect. We will also see the name of uh, Lev Kekushev. And we have two dates. Uh, again, all the information is mainly in Russian, but that's what I want to share with you. So originally it was built, just the years, originally it was built in the 30s, in the 19th century, but we have the second date, just the time when it was decorated. I think it's a very good job. And we already know about this beautiful lions being the symbol of Kekushev design. So that's how you can also recognize that this building has something to do with this prominent Russian architect. Yes, Noreen, I love it. I think it's very beautiful. And something that I shared in my previous tours, I'm a big fan of uh, Art Nouveau. And unfortunately, in Russia, we don't have that many buildings that represent this style, this design. Uh, why is that? It's just, it was a very short period of time when we had Art Nouveau, uh, basically 25 years. And normally it's known as the time of flirtation with Art Nouveau. And there are not that many architects that are known for this style. Again, uh, Lev Kekushev, he is the Tsar, he is the king, uh, but uh, there was also... Fyodor Shechtin, there is a lovely man who is... Yes, the, the gentleman, he's saying, just take a photo from that side. Take a photo. For those of you who join me later, just another look. Thanks to this beautiful gentleman. He's saying very nice. Спасибо большое, спасибо. Спасибо. He says, just stand here. Да, уже сделала, уже сделала. It's really nice, it's really lovely. And also we have a view. Yeah, I mean, he's absolutely right. This is something that was not included in the tour and I haven't shown it before. It was Zachatevsky and now he's saying, oh, you have to zoom in. So lovely. 
uh, yes. So the Zachatevsky, Zachatevsky convent. We'll uh, take a look from uh, the other side. And it's actually the first time I'm showing Zachatevsky convent on this tour. Again, there is just so much to see on the street. And I think the timing is really good. Yes, Noreen, we talked about the lion. We talked about this castle. So I'll just remind everyone else that the lion, again, is the symbol of... Uh, Lev Kekushev design. This building is a revenue house, revenue mansion that also belong, uh, belonged to Kekushev family. What was the revenue mansion? It was just basically the way to make money for rich people so others could rent uh, apartments and there is also the beginning uh, of the 20th century. And then we have another beautiful building, uh, another revenue mansion uh, from this side probably not the best angle so I'm just going to cross the street to share with you better views uh, it's two seconds yeah this tour oh yeah very nice very nice <laughs> so with this tour unfortunately we have to go back and forth just to see this uh, beautiful building from uh, different angles but uh, nevertheless I believe it's worth it. Uh, one of the interesting buildings in Art Nouveau design that I'm going to share with you uh, will be of a gentleman who uh, decided to have a reversed glass at the top of the building. So that is also one of the interesting designs. Uh, balconies, as I've already mentioned in the beginning of the tour, indeed it's one of the most expensive streets in Moscow. Uh, the name of the street Astoshenka and it's hard to believe that in the 17th century it was just a meadow and it wasn't really part of Moscow. The name Astoshenka comes from the word uh, stack and uh, later on in the 18th and in the 19th century it becomes more than just a street, it becomes a street for the nobility and we'll get to see the Cathedral of the Christ the Savior will get to see this stunning views over the Kremlin. That's what makes it special. My map is off as always these days. Unfortunately, that was the decision that we made with Hego three months ago, just for my safety, because I also do many tours from home. Uh, but uh, I can say how far we are from the city center. And again, you can always uh, see Astoshenka Street, so we're approximately 20-25 uh, minutes walk from uh, the Kremlin, from this area, so it's not that far. And of course, normally you wouldn't have an apartment in the Kremlin because today it's a museum, it's also the residence or the, uh, the president, uh, but this area, Astoshenka, it's already more uh, than just a touristy place and actually often we don't do tours in here for foreigners uh, if we have tours in this area there would be tours uh, for Russians and a lot of these tours they are uh, about Art Nouveau design just because there are not so many examples again in the city if you also like this style I recommend you joining uh, British Moscow tour that's where I show <clears throat> Metropole Hotel, one of the oldest hotels and one of the most beautiful hotels in the city. Uh, now I'm showing you the Chatevsky convent. We cannot uh, go inside, we cannot go in there, but it's a very beautiful also place uh, that unfortunately was closed uh, during Soviet times and it was reopened only in 1995. Uh, on the other side we have a multimedia art museum so this is a popular place for uh, exhibitions for photo exhibitions and i'm going to share a photo of how it looks inside so it's lovely you know, to see different types of designs different types of uh, architecture the irony of the building on the left side is that it played an important role during the revolution and when i say the revolution 1917 so that is a very important year in our history and uh, normally we would say we have the history before and after the revolution that was one of the offices of uh, <clears throat> the communist supporters of the Bolshevik back time uh, back then Bolshevik supporters but interestingly then uh, on the other side where now we have this modern building 
they used to be uh, the ones who supported whites. So it can be very chaotic. On one side, you have the ones who uh, support uh, one party. On the other side, that was the time of the revolution. Uh, so going back to the prices and the meaning of the street, uh, today you can find different numbers. So if you want to rent an apartment in this area, it uh, would be approximately $8,000 a month. And it's really a lot for Moscow. Moscow was considered as to be the, one of the oldest cities in the world 10 years ago. Things keep changing depending on the exchange rate. So we'll just have to go through. Um, there won't be many beautiful views <laughs> for a minute, but that's how we can see this beautiful architecture. You know, that's how they're able to preserve it, that they have to renovate. Uh, the good thing also about this area, I liked uh, the style, you know, this uh, beautiful lady that uh, often uh, when I do tours in the city center, I see many stylish people and we even have these areas where you know you'll go there and you'll see a different side of Moscow, new Moscow. Uh, it's not the same story in my area where I live. And today we have a festival called New Moscow. Apparently they're celebrating eight years of New Moscow. So <laughs> the festival is devoted to Moscow being better, more beautiful than it used to be 10 years. And it's, and it's true in some way, because today Moscow is certainly cleaner. That's one of the things that many tourists notice when they come to Moscow. Uh, and you can see it's very clean. We're in the city center. Uh, this is also one of the things that many tourists notice than they, um, when I do virtual tours. So now I'm going to show you another interesting and special building from the beginning of the 20th century. And it's known as the building with the reversed glass. Why reverse glass? Well, the owner of this building had some problems with alcohol. Sounds like a Russian man, right? And can you imagine he's lost his money, his business, all of his fortune. Somehow he was able to find his way to uh, stop drinking. And then he decided to put a reversed glass at the top of his mansion to say that this story is over. I will never drink again. I don't know if he had uh, ever drank after that uh, or not, but it sounds like an interesting story. It sounds like a very inspirational story. And let me show you the reverse glass. It's over there and we'll change the road. We'll cross this, uh, the road and we will take a look at it from the other side. I can't believe it's the same place I came to 33 years ago. Wonderful to see. And thank you very much for sharing. Uh, that's what I say that when I came to Moscow, even two and a half years after uh, living in Israel, it was a different place. And to look, today, many people agree that Moscow is more charming than it used to be, especially if you compare it to the 90s. And even people with, uh, you know, different political views, different political opinions, many would still agree that Moscow is a beautiful city. Many would still agree that Moscow is one of the most beautiful cities. And we have, <laughs> you know, and we have a very beautiful and creative projects. And one of them is Earth Play that was a factory that turned into a creative cluster. But let me show you one sign of communism. Uh, everywhere in the Soviet Union, anywhere you would go to any big city, you'd have a statue of Lenin in the city center, Lenin Square, Lenin Street. It's still the case in many places. Uh, then they would also have Karl Marx Street, that is that is still pretty common. Here we have a monument to Friedrich Engels. Ironically, ironically, that many people think in in Moscow, ironically that in Moscow many people think that it's a Russian 
prince uh, uh he's someone from russian history and also the street the other street that we have another beautiful street prechistinka was named after kropotkin the man one of the revolutionaries and people thought that it was kropotkin himself <laughs> not uh not uh Gregory Hangels. so let me see i see there are many comments let me show you this beautiful cathedral and we'll get closer we will walk around so the tour is called around the cathedral of the christ the savior or the christ the savior cathedral so if you like taking postcards i promise you'll have a chance to take as many postcards of this beautiful cathedral as you want we'll talk about its history architecture beautiful design meanwhile while i'll go through your questions uh please tell me what do you think is it old and you what century approximately in your opinion uh, I can't believe you were awake so late for this Anna. My name is Tanya, but thank you, Sarah. And it's 9 p.m. in Moscow. I, so there was a question about my colleague, Anna. The problem is, uh, so as far as I know, Anna had to stop doing tours because we are not able, we were not able to receive tips due to war, due to the sanctions, due to everything that is happening. Uh, in the world, I'm able to have an, an additional account outside of Russia just because I'm also an Israeli. So that's how we decided with Hego that I'm able to continue. But it's a really big headache. So <laughs> if you enjoyed this story, uh, you can make a contribution. It's always highly appreciated. And it's something that helps me to keep doing tours to stay in Russia and to invest my time uh, into creating more tours. Uh, oh, Anna, sorry, it was a reference to Ma, to Anna from Sydney. Sorry, uh, that's <laughs> sorry, sorry. But in any case, uh, in any case, yeah, I, I hope that my colleague. We'll come back she also has uh, wonderful tours and it's uh, great that there is another tour guide who can attract people to moscow yes you can tip me here uh, jerry thank you <laughs> so uh about the cathedral the christ the Savior. so the question was is it old and you and it's hard to imagine that the main cathedral in russia is new it was built only 20 years ago, a little bit more than 20 years ago, opened in 2000. What is the story? Why? Uh, so it is new, it is new, yes. But it's a copy of the original one. So even one cathedral can tell us a lot about Russia, Russian history, and I believe our culture. So originally it was built in 1883 and it was built to celebrate the victory over Napoleon uh, in 1812. At that time it was common to have cathedrals, churches to celebrate big victories. And inside this cathedral there is a lot of information about the victory, about this, uh, the battles, main battles. It took over 40 years to build the original one for Russian Tsarist change from the moment it was planned to the moment it was built. But then it didn't stop Stalin from destroying it. It was blown up twice in 1931. I'm going to share this photo with you. If you like Russian literature, I know that some of you also know about my, me and about my tours, thanks to Russian literature. I think yesterday I added a new tour about Russian literature. So you are more than welcome. So for those of you who are interested in Russian literature, I want to say that um, one of the best writers in the 20th century, Ilya Ilf, he lived on the opposite side and he was also a photographer. And he was one of the photographers who took a picture of how the Christ the Savior Cathedral was blowing up. It's a sad story. So why did he do it? Why did he order it? Well, um, first, there was no religion in the Soviet Union. 
As Karl Marx said, the religion is the opium of the masses. So many believed in it. The second reason, he wanted to have the tallest building in the world, the Palace of Soviets. Let me share another photo with you. Can you imagine 400 meters and 100 meters of Lenin at the top? I've already mentioned that Lenin was everywhere and Lenin is still everywhere. It's another complicated story of Russia, how we no longer have communists, but still we have Lenin everywhere. Still, to compare, it is the tallest Orthodox cathedral in the world, 103 meters. And then Stalin wanted to have the palace of the Soviets 400 meters, only 100 meters of Lenin. Can you imagine? So I'm going to show you another beautiful building. We'll get back to this cathedral. We'll take a look from the other side uh, when I'll go to the bridge. But I also want to share with you another beautiful building uh, that represents pseudo-Russian style. And the building looks as if you are from uh, it is from a Russian fairy tale, and you are in a Russian fairy tale. I see there are comments in the chat, so let me go through. Um, yes, it's new. It is a surprise, and we have an expression in Moscow. Everything changes in 20 years, but nothing in 200 years. Looking also at what is happening with Russia uh, during these days, I mean, probably, yes. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we have a similar story with other cathedrals. And if you join my Red Square tour, the best of Moscow tour, it's a kind of a spoiler, but there are similar stories. So the tip goes directly to you and not other third parties. Uh, it goes to me, but of course I share a percentage with uh, Hego. Uh, so this way Hego is able to add new features, this way we are able to share photos with you, to have zoom in, zoom out. Yes, I decided that it would be also a lot of headache uh, to ask my colleagues to keep uh, doing tours for me. So that is the building that we will take a look at. Keep ready with batteries near you in case power. Okay, Ronnie, thank you for your contribution. Jerry, Noreen, thank you very much. Highly appreciate it. Christina, thank you for your contribution. Mikaela. Um, so what are the next to the cables in the crosses? So we, the domes, so bells, not sure what you're referring to, but the police car, something. <laughs> Something about modern Moscow everywhere. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, so the mansion that I'm showing you known as Spirit Soft Mansion, and the similar story as with Kyakushev. So it's also known as Spirit Soft, Sova, either after his wife or after himself. And as I said, it represents pseudo-Russian style. What it means, right? Pseudo-Russian style, it's the design from uh, the end of the 19th century when there was the revival of uh, Russian culture, Russian traditions. And if we'll take a look at the design, we'll see many floral anim uh, elements, uh, many animals. So that's how it brings us to a fairy tale. It was built in the beginning of the 20th century. Look at this dragons there's just so much to explore so much to see and there's an interesting story behind it about the place so the owner uh Pirtsov, was a friend with another rich man Svetkov. there is a Svetkov mansion nearby and Pirtsov asked his friend oh can i have a building in this area i just love it it's so beautiful it's stunning and Svetkov said yes I can help you, but you have to build it in a Russian design. And he said, yes, of course. There was a contest. So if you want to remember the name, uh, here it is in Russian Pirates of House. There you go. So there was a contest between the best Russian architect and the man who won, Malutin. He was actually, he didn't won. 
uh, the one who won was Apolinary Vasnitsov, but the, at the end, the architect was Malutin. Malutin is also the founder of Russian doll. Russian doll known as Matryoshka or Russian nesting dolls. Uh, it might seem like we had Russian dolls for centuries, but uh, it was created only in 1819. So the same, the same founder as this place. So many beautiful elements, uh, beautiful doors. Unfortunately, again, it's not uh, possible to go inside and there is even the information about it in, in English. Apparently many people try it. So often tourists, uh, usually tourists don't come to this area only to see the Cathedral of the Christ this area. So maybe when they walk around, they just uh, want to pay a visit to this beautiful mansion, uh, main administration for a service to the diplomatic corps. But I have some photos to share with you. That's how it used to look during uh, period of and he had a huge collection of Russian art. So he was one of the main, uh, he had one of the biggest collection, uh, collections. So again, walking around this building, which you can just see so many uh, nice and amazing elements. What happened to it after the revolution? After the revolution, it was nationalized as everything else. And later on, Leon, Trotsky or Lev Trotsky in Russia lived in this building. So he had a good taste, right? Uh, interestingly, how everything was for communism, for equality, but he ended up in this special periods of mansion. I absolutely love it. And there's just so much to see, it, so much uh, to explore with the details. But we are going to cross the road to get to the Cathedral of the Christ, the Savior. Uh, while we are waiting, I can show you the former factory Red October. Uh, originally it was named as ANM, but again, everything changed after the revolution. So it became known as Red October, one of the biggest uh, candy factories still exists. It was opened in 18. 51. Today, uh, the candy factory is no longer there, but that's where the area where we have a creative cluster, one of the creative clusters, modern areas. So let's cross the street. Otherwise, we would have to wait for oh, five minutes. Sometimes it takes five minutes. So it is nice that uh, we had this good timing. So take a look. Over there, we have the Kremlin behind the bridge. And yesterday I posted a new tour about the Kremlin. So those of you who haven't joined tours in Moscow, I want to mention that the Kremlin is the oldest part of the city. It's also the residence, the former residence of Russian Tsars. Uh, today it's the main residence of the president. The Kremlin museums uh, is also the heart of Moscow, one of the beautiful, the most beautiful parts in the city. And let me, the sky is beautiful. Yes, Michaela, thank you. I did it on purpose. I really wanted to have the best timing. What's the time now? It's 9 p.m., 9 p.m. in Moscow. The weather is also perfect. So during these times, so we can have days when it's plus 30 and it would be too much for a Moscovite uh, during the day. So of course, it's much better to have tours in the evening. So let me just to go through your comments what influenced russian architecture ellen very good question uh so if we talk about uh, the cathedral of the christ this area it's byzantine because our religion orthodox christianity uh came from constantinople came from byzantine and originally the cathedrals would look like uh in byzantine so this is one thing another story it would be about the countries that we had relations with so when we will go upstairs i'll show you the kremlin and the kremlin was built by italian architects uh, with italy it was the same story it was also uh, about the orthodox christianity so we invited italian architects and uh, later on with Peter the Great in the 18th and in the 19th century it was also about relations uh, between russia 
and um, Europe. But if you ask about traditional Russian style, tradition Russian uh, design, that's uh, something that is considered unique and special. And usually I would say that Russian style, Russian design is the combination of uh, European and Asian architecture because uh, most of the Russian buildings, like Russian, Russian design would be uh, colorful. So we will go upstairs. That's where we'll have some other beautiful views. I never knew that. Hey. Mention, please, where he wanted me to turn around. Uh, now, unfortunately, it wasn't possible. The building is too big and it's just because of the trees. But I will go upstairs. I'll try to <laughs> show you it again. What is the main religion, Evelyn? Very good question. The main religion is the Orthodox Christianity. And actually, I prepared uh, statistics for you with the Orthodox Christianity. It's in Russian. So the first goes for the Orthodox Christianity. And the second part is for other religions. So we also have a big Muslim community. We have some regions in Russia where people are predominantly uh, Muslims. But uh, it is also very interesting from a cultural perspective. That was, hope it's fine. There's some technical works, but I'll walk as fast as I can. So we will avoid them. Yeah, the sky is just is just really perfect for those of you who like and postcards and I think for virtual tourists also a very good time uh, for us to see this amazing cathedral and also views from the bridge. So Orthodox Christianity, we adopted Orthodox Christianity in the 10th century in 1988. It was Prince Vladimir. And I'm going to show you the monument to Prince Vladimir during the tour around the Kremlin. That's where we can also talk a little bit more about Orthodox Christianity. But again, the main cathedral, the biggest in Moscow, the tallest Orthodox cathedral in the world is the one in front of you. And it's more than just a cathedral. It's also the symbol of Orthodox Christianity. So we already know that many cathedrals, churches, monasteries, convents were destroyed in Soviet times. And guess what was uh, instead of uh, this cathedral during the Soviet times? We already know that Stalin wanted to have the palace of the Soviets. The project wasn't realized. Well, economic crisis, then the Second World War, then Stalin died. And believe it or not, but we had a swimming pool called Moskva, Moscow. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> very, you know, very practical. This is a big difference between Khrushchev and Stalin. Uh, Stalin, ambitious project, the palace of the Soviets and Khrushchev just a um, swimming pool. Uh, but in the 90s, it was not in a very good condition and people needed uh, this cathedral as the symbol of Orthodox Christianity. Many Russians, uh, many Muscovites donated money uh, and also many companies donated money to rebuild the cathedral. And if you go inside on the first floor, it has two floors, you will be able to see the names of the companies that donated money. So let's take a look. So this is one of the best views. That's where we have the Kremlin. Again, I recently published a new tour about the Kremlin, but it's a big fortification. So uh, several of my tours include uh, the Kremlin. The new one will have stunning views. I'm going to zoom in for you. That will be also a similar view that we'll have during the tour. It will be from the, uh, the bridge on the opposite side. That's the bridge that we can see. So it will be much better uh, quality. Uh, again, it's the oldest part of the city, the heart of Moscow from the 15th century. Uh, the building on the right side is known as the building on the embankment. But believe it or not, it was one of the most prestigious buildings in the city. And it was built for the elite in the 30s. Unfortunately, uh, the residents had 
a pretty tragic destiny. Many of them became the victims of Stalin's repressions. <laughs> take a look. A lot of people uh, take photos in here. Uh, it's known as a Patriarch's Bridge. Patriarch is the head of the church. He's the head of the Russian church. The river that we have is the Moscow River. Uh, river cruises are very popular in summertime, but we even have river cruises in winter. So let's take a look at the other side. And I remember that I was asked to show you periods of mention. So I think from here we will also have a very good angle. Again, there are many trees around, so it is tricky and it's a pretty big one. So we would have to go on the other side, but isn't it lovely? Uh, again, as I said, looks like Sirium. That's what you would say about a mansion from a fairy tale. Uh, absolutely beautiful and lovely. Uh, one of the most unique and special buildings. And this tour is about it. This tour is about unique buildings, unique architecture. On the other side, this is a monument to Peter the Great. Originally it was Christopher Columbus and Zurab Tseriteli, the sculptor, created it for Americans, but they were like, no, thank you. Nice idea, but no, thank you. Then he had to turn it into Peter the Great. But maybe thanks to my colleague from St. Petersburg, you know that Peter the Great wasn't a big fan of Moscow. He moved the capital to St. Petersburg, so it makes more sense to, ha to have this monument in St. Petersburg. But the administration of St. Petersburg was also thankful. They said, great idea, but we don't have money. And because our previous mayor, Yuri Lushkov, was a big fan of Zurab Tseriteli, the sculptor, he decided to have it in Moscow. The tallest sculpture, the monument sculpture, the tallest monument sculpture, 94 meters, and officially it's devoted to 300 years anniversary of Russian fleet. Over there we have one of the buildings of uh, Tretikov Gallery. It's in Museum Park. That's where I have another new tourist. I have many new tourists for you. I hope you're excited and will be happy to join. Uh, so that was everything that I wanted to share with you. You can just see also some nice views. Uh, if you joined my tour, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, on Arbat Street, that is, that skyscraper over there is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that we were able to see from Arbat Street. So, we already know a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And I think the good part on the tour today is that we can see the sky changing. So, if there are no questions, then thank you for joining me. I hope it was a good, inspire, uh, a good journey, a good introduction to Moscow. I will be happy to see you on my tours. Uh, have a wonderful day uh, and uh, all the best. If you enjoyed this experience, uh, you can make a contribution or and you can also write a review. This way we will be able to attract more tourists to see Moscow and to see the other side of Russia, something different from what we have in the media. So I see there are some questions. Um, thank you, Noreen, uh, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate it. Marty, Judith, also thank you very much for your contributions. So, <laughs> thank you everyone. Beautiful church, but should bleed for this. <laughs> uh, Mark, it's a different story and there are some articles about the church, not only Russian church, but any church uh, during wars and conflicts. And I would say it's a lot about <laughs> humanity and the world in general and how things work so let's let's just uh, focus okay thank you thank you again uh so have a wonderful day all the best and take care thank you christina